Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm the traveling stitcher. Um, you might know me from my Instagram or if you've just uh, stumbled upon my channel, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I've been an avid fan of Floss Tube since March 2020. The pandemic hit, the world changed and it was the perfect time, frankly, for me to discover Floss Tube. I have followed an embarrassing number of channels ever since and there's a huge number of them that if I miss an episode, I insist on waiting to watch the new ones until I've had time to go back and see the things I've missed because I just, I enjoy it so much. Um, and I've loved being part of the Instagram community. Finally, <laughs> with the encouragement of some friends um, and the motivation of wanting to share some Christmas ornaments with you, I've taken the terrifying plunge to make a floss tube video. Uh, it's one thing that I was absolutely certain I would never, ever, 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 ever do, but here I am. <laughs> uh, clearly, the impossible can be possible. Um, I know people talk about themselves at the start. I'm trying to keep this short because I'm off camera. I know that's not normal, and I know people really like to see uh, the people chatting with them, but for personal reasons, I'm not able to go on camera, and I really hope you'll excuse me for that. Um, I'm here to to share my stitching, and uh, if you're you're happy to enjoy it, <laughs> um, then I'd, I'd, I'd love it if I could show it with you. Um, I can tell you a little bit about myself just very quickly. I'm still in my 30s by a little bit. <laughs> um, and I kind of think of it like stitching from the cradle to the grave because I've been stitching since I was old enough to grab the needle out of my mum's hand <laughs> and try and shove it through fabric. I I grew up on her knee. She was a, a really passionate crafter and I, I always wanted to just interfere with what she was doing and do it myself, which I imagine would have been quite trying for her, but I'm, I'm very blessed. I was raised by an incredibly patient woman who's passionate about craft and about teaching me anything I wanted to know. So by the age of three, I was drawing abstract designs and stitching them with this, these great big thick, like finger length really, um, needles, big fat plastic ones with wool through hessian sacks and we made cushions, and cushion covers out of them. By five, I could sit alone and cross stitch and it's been a lifelong passion. I try really hard to stitch in a way that's caring of my body and my eyes so that I never have to give it up. Um, and in the, it feels crazy, but over 30 years that I've been stitching, um, I've learned a lot, which is why I set up the Cross Stitch Academy with Lana Pfeiffer earlier this year. I was so grateful to her for joining me there. And the, the whole purpose of that was to to share what we know, but, but more than that, to start a conversation amongst stitchers about the way we do things, because there's no one right way. And I feel like... For newer stitches, sometimes there can be a perception that there is, and that can feel quite exclusive for some people, but there isn't. We all do things differently. I'm constantly learning from people and really grateful to the people in this community for sharing the way they do things for that. And that was my... my That plus ornaments and, and loving watching the ornament parade that was recently put out by Jen Quilter, who's one half of the two tool stitches, um, and wanting to share my ornaments. Those were my my motivations for, for being here and doing this today. So if you like this format, I could go back to sharing Academia topics again, but in person here, so I can really show you what I'm talking about. But for now, <laughs> we should probably start where we are, see how this video lands before I commit myself to doing something that... I may lose motivation to do, <laughs> particularly if not seeing the person chatting with you on the camera is, is really off-putting for you and, and you don't enjoy it. So we'll wait and see. Um, I'll do this video and then if, if that's something you're interested in seeing, um, please let me know. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you my cross-stitch ornaments. I love stitching Christmas. I lost all my ornaments. I had a couple of exceptions, but I lost almost all of them a couple of years ago when I went through a life event. So 
I was overjoyed to find Carol, who's caroling55 on Instagram, does a year-long sale, uh, which has the focus of stitching 12 ornaments in a year. And it was a great way to, to find people to stitch Christmas with, to be motivated, to um, build up my ornament collection again. Um, this is my third year participating, and the first two years, I think both years, I fell short of 12 ornaments. I know the first one I did. This year... <laughs> <laughs> I've just counted and I finished 21 Christmas ornaments this year in addition to stitching on some baps and full coverages and a range of things this hasn't been my focus for the year it's just been something that I've loved doing in amongst the bigger projects so that's exciting. You will see I'm not an FFOA. <laughs> There's a lot of raw edges here. And I have just taken some of these down from my Christmas tree, put up just like this. And I have no shame with that. They're beautiful ornaments, I think. And that's okay. But next year, I'm going to be following along with two tall stitches and Jen Quilter and FFOing more things. Um, I've really enjoyed Vonna Pfeiffer's videos. I've learned a lot from them. I really been motivated and encouraged by the proper stitcher that it doesn't have to be perfect just get it done but when it comes down to it we all have so much time and it's a question of do I want to stitch or do I want to finish and I'm always going to choose stitching <laughs> except for 2024 it's changing so with no further ado I'm going to get to these oh and at one last thing <laughs> um at the end, because I like the idea of giving back and adding value to the community through my interactions with it, if you'd like to stick around for it, I'm going to show you how I prep a Mill Hill ornament in case that's of interest to you. They have a lot of Christmas ones, so people tend to stitch them at this time of year. But I also want to acknowledge Steph from Pam and Steph Just Keep Stitching. I reached out to her. I was so nervous about doing this, and I said, please, as a pro... <laughs> Do you have any advice for me? And she was just so generous and so kind and so warm and so welcoming. And I probably would have sat on doing this for another week and then it would have been past Christmas and I would have waited a year. Um, but her generosity and warmth pushed me over. Just sit down and do it, <laughs> which is what I'm doing now. So props to Steph. Thank you, all of you, anyone who might be here. <laughs> If anyone is here, and if you're not, hey, thanks anyway. Um, with no further ado, this is this year's finishes. So the first one I want to show you is the one that I've just finished. I haven't shared this on Instagram yet, but I'm super excited about it. This is Cardinal Kin uh, from Plum Street Samplers. A lot of people are stitching it this year, and oh my goodness, it is so beautiful. So I actually started stitching this when I was on a road trip with my mum and dad and so it's really sentimental to me for that reason. Um, I used the first colourway, so it has colourways called Cardinal Kin and Cardinal Kin 2. I used Cardinal Kin and I stitched it exactly as called for except I picked my own fabric. Now this is a coffee tea dyed fabric. I used the Priscilla and Chelsea method but with this one I started with tan fabric. Um, I just, I didn't like the tone. It was a little bit too blue toned. I wanted a little bit more yellow. So a light coffee tea dye um, did the trick. The only alterations that I have made to it is I didn't really like the way the eyes came out for me. Um, so I'm stitching on 14 count Ada and they are over one, but that's not a problem for me. I... <laughs> I did a full coverage piece when I was 12 years old that was full of fractional stitches and I did it on I think 16 or 18 count because I did not know any better. I suffered. It took me I think 10 years to finish that. Um, but I'm very comfortable with fractional stitches as a result. But I did this one here and it's three black stitches, a little tiny corner white and then black outline and it just didn't really stand out as much as I wanted so one of the, my favorite things to do when I'm stitching is to add beads as embellishment it's just a tiny little bit of 3d but it also gives a nice shine and so I chose Mill Hill 03011 I just took it out of a kit 
<laughs> it's a little bit dangerous, but I've discovered that um, they're, they're very generous. So I'm hoping <laughs> that they were generous with that bead in this kit as well. I've only taken three. Um, but I really love it. I'm really happy with the way it finished. And it was quite a quick and easy stitch, actually. Uh, my second to last finish. Da, da, da. My first annual Prairie School of Santa. This is the 2023 Santa that felt like a fitting one to start. You'll notice it's quite different to the way it's meant to look. <laughs> so 14 count coffee tea dyed Ada again. And you'll notice the difference in the color. So this one was dyed on tan. This one was dyed on white. And this is a child's craft, so it's got a lot of really big holes in it compared to Zweigart or Witch Out, uh, which I don't really love, but it's cheap and I like the price. So that's the difference between over dyeing the already dyed fabric and one that was white to start with. So I changed this up. I loved it the way it was. I love Prairie Schooler as they are. But what I wanted to do with this is I wanted an oval ornament instead of a rectangular one. And I want to do a series of Mill Hill, not Mill Hill, sorry, <laughs> Brewery School ornaments, which honor the men in my paternal line. So this one honors my father. And the reason I have this here is just for his privacy. It has his name and the year that he was born. Um, but I love this. Now this, the reason I chose this one for my dad, <laughs> I hope he won't mind me saying this. When I was young, they used to tell us about back in my day, I used to walk barefoot through the snow 50 miles to get to school each way. I'm probably exaggerating, but the stories were exaggerated and they were meant to be and they were hilarious. They made us laugh. But this reminds me of, of those fun moments, having those conversations with him. And so this is the one that I chose to honor him. And I'm really excited to go through the annual Santa catalog and, and to pick the one that I'm going to stitch for his father, my grandfather. These ones here are, oh, I'm out of order from my notes now, it's naughty. <laughs> um, this is Prairie School of St. Nick 2. Uh, it is a series and I finished three of them this year. So I used the called for colors um, and I stitched them mostly as charted. I generally don't include a lot of the snow and I think this one here, had a range of snow coming down. I didn't do it. I'm from New Zealand. We spend summer on the beach. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> That's a normal thing to do. We spend Christmas on the beach. Um, it's hot, it's sunny. And so snow at Christmas is something that I'm not accustomed to. And it's beautiful, but it's not for me. So maybe one day if I move to, to that environment, I'll start stitching all the snowy things. Um, but for now, I liked that more as a, a day and night or summer and winter um, aspect to the motif, which taking the snow out did. So I finished these three this year. Now these are on what was 14 count black Ada, but I didn't quite like the coverage. I was using two strands of floss with the called for DMC using the sewing method and to me it was a bit spare. I really like not to see the background fabric between my stitches. So to me this here, that's a bit too spare. I don't love it. Um, I like it a lot more now. If it was more dense, it might have been less fun to stitch. But when I started it, it, it wasn't for me. So what I did was I boiled. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a normal technique. <laughs> I'm not even sure I can recommend it. Don't do this if you're using an over dyed fabric because you'll probably take the colouring out of it. Um, but this is commercial black Ada, so I felt okay doing it. So I just, I boiled it. Um, and the, the motivation for that was wanting to make it smaller. And the reason why I thought it might make it smaller was because in Priscilla and Chelsea's tutorial for coffee tea dyeing, they said, now be very, very careful not to boil your fabric because if you will, it will shrink. And I thought, aha, that's exactly <laughs> what I want to do. Let's shrink it. And it did shrink. And more than that, it took out a lot of the color. 
the water was a very dark, almost chocolatey uh, richness when I, I tipped it out. And it turned these from very, very black uh, fabric pieces to what's more of a chalkboard shade, which is perfect. I love it. And I must acknowledge Carol, Caroling55, I saw her finish on one from this series on black, and that was my inspiration to stitch them on black. And I absolutely love it. Now, these are not ones that I finished this year. Um, but I will show them to you at the same time. So these are the other ones from the series. Now this one I've changed. There were two Santas that had a doll and one of them Santa was smoking and I'm not interested in teaching my children to smoke so I didn't want a smoking Santa on my tree. It's just personal preference. So I took the doll from one I think this was the doll that was on the smoking center and I put it here to kind of smush together the two ornaments into one design. So in that way I have seven that are finished and not eight. This is a <laughs> mostly fully finished one that actually was, I think it was glued on and it fell off. <laughs> and my hot glue guns, um, it's a cheapie from the supermarket and so... Uh, possibly need to get a better quality one. So this was my favourite from the series. These are my son's initials um, and the cardinal because I think of them when I see it. This was the first one that I did. I stitched this when I was in Fiji doing quarantine. <laughs> it, was, it was great. Sorry, I'm moving it around. It was great company. So this was the first one and I used three strands of floss for this one. And you can see how squished it looks compared to this one. But I love the coverage. But looking at it now two years later, I do feel like it looks quite squished. And I wasn't thrilled with it when I picked it up again. And that's why I went, mm, okay, I'm going to try and shrink my Ada. <laughs> I, I wasn't in a place where I could purchase... I've never even been to an alley next, let alone have one near me. I was in a place where I could purchase 16 count black Ada, so I just had to make do and mend. Um, and so shrinking it was the right thing for me to do. So that's the that's this collection. I love it. I stitched the whole thing in two years. Um, most of these were my starts for Mania last year. I was quite proud of myself, I have to say, for finishing the series. I'm good at starting things. <laughs> but sometimes that's where it ends. <laughs> so, this pattern is designed by Kyoto. I don't recall her surname. Um, but her design brand is Gera, which Gera Gera means laugh in Japanese, apparently. Um, I don't speak Japanese. I wish I did. And... I loved this design. The colours I chose for myself, this is my youngest son's ornament for this year and he always loved Tom and Jerry when he was growing up and so I wanted this to be a Tom and Jerry ornament and I achieved that just by choosing my own colours. So this variegated is DMC 115, um, the others I'm not sure if I have them recorded I might be able to dig them out if anyone's interested but I might not <laughs> as well let me know if you'd like me to try um, but I love this this was a really quick stitch it was a fun stitch and I, I love how with simple ornaments like this <coughs> excuse me um, they're really easy to make your own just by changing the colors there was nothing wrong with it the way it was it was designed as a lovely ornament but by just changing I think I flipped the colours of these two animals um, and changing a few of the other colours. It made it personal to me and I'm just so happy with it. And I love how designers do a great job, I think, designing things. But when they do it so that it's easy for us to make modifications if we'd like to, then I enjoy that all the more. So this is also 14 Count Tea Dyed Ada. And I've been stitching, as I say, for over 30 years. So it's not that I can't stitch on high accounts. It's that I don't always want to. Um, and I don't agree with the, the, the view that um, you can't be a good stitcher if you don't stitch on 40 count. Um, 
which I don't think people actually say, but I think sometimes people put that pressure on themselves as opposed to it being external. Um, and I've just freed myself from pushing myself around <laughs> in that way. This ornament uh, was another finish this year. Um, it's a little bit of a cheeky finish because I stitched most of it in 2020. It's designed by Chalala and I whipped it up quite quickly and then I didn't know how I wanted to finish it. I didn't know if I wanted beads or white stitches or, or what. And so what I ended up doing this year was pulling it out and just using this gold, or so wherever the gold is, that's what I did this year. Um, and it's just the DMC gold and I finished it off. I did it in one short sitting and I've heard a lot about DMC gold being really difficult to use and perhaps it is. Um, I did not find it difficult on this occasion but you can see it's only a few stitches and it is 14 count which means the holes are slightly larger than it would be on a small account depending on the fabric manufacturer. So possibly I'll find it horrible in the future. So I'm not wanting to say it's actually really really easy in case I jinx myself. <laughs> But I did find it easy on this occasion. So what I will say is, if you think you'd like to give it a go, um, don't be afraid of it. But equally, if you have and you know it's not for you, that's okay too. Um, interesting thing about this, so I I don't know why. <laughs> Early 2020 when I stitched it, I did it with my the top stitch all going this way on the inside and that way on the outside and when you stitch you're meant to have your top leg go in the same direction throughout the piece it doesn't matter what direction it goes in I've observed that it tends to be northern hemisphere goes this way and southern hemisphere that way now that might just be my observations that may not be true at all um, I like my top hat going this way but for some reason with this one <laughs> I didn't do that and so when I was putting in these these little gold stitches I had to pull it out a few times the hardest thing was realizing that I was stitching the way I normally stitch <laughs> and needed to change it to have my hat going in the other direction but I love this one again it's a really fun easy one I picked all my own colors just using what I had on hand and um, it was a great deal of fun all right what should I show you next? How about we pull out this one? So this is a Lizzie Kate Joy to the World. Um, this was my first finish of the year. I think it might be the second, first or second. I also did a Lizzie Kate Summer Small right at the start of the year. I've decided after asking for uh, feedback from the Instagram community that I am going to take out these eyes and replace them with smaller ones. These are just normal seed beads from I think a charity store. I'm going to replace them with Mill Hill Petite seed beads um, because they do, even now pulling it out after being put away for 11 months, they do pop out at me a little bit more than I would like. <laughs> and I don't want that to be the thing I spend most of my time looking at when I look at the stitching so I'm going to make that change um, but I still consider it finished and it's one that I want to fully finish next year I think the way I want to do it is I think I want to do it as a long pillow one of those flattish pillows like like Vonna does for ornaments and put it in the tree I think that would be quite lovely um, but do it so that the hanger can be folded behind. So if I want to stand it in front of my television, for instance, or something like that, that that's a, a great option that won't look funny and like it's meant to be an ornament. All right. Next up, this counts for two. <laughs> I only have one to show you today. I searched this twice this year for my mum and for me. So I started this nativity series by Mill Hill for my mum. And I've stitched her one every year for I think seven years because the first year I gave her two. Um, it's a nine piece nativity, so it's three Mill Hill trilogies. This one I haven't finished cutting out because the only scissors I had available to me were those great big, huge, long like paper scissors. And I was worried that I was going to accidentally 
cut too far and so I just made myself put it away. It's not worth spending all this time working on these things just to be too hasty at the end and damage it. So all I need to do is cut this last little bit, sew his beautiful gift onto his hand um, and then put on a hanger and possibly back it. So I followed the you can see my backs if you want I'm not ashamed of them I no longer stitch so that my backs are flawless that's the way my great grandmother taught my nana taught my mum taught me um, but since then I've learned from blitz stitch that you can mess up your back as long as it's flat um, the thing that matters the most is the direction you're pulling the top leg of your stitch in so I've I've released myself from pressure of having a perfect back um, and I focus more on having really tidy, pretty stitches on the front. So this is exactly as called for, except I use plastic canvas instead of the perforated paper. And that's because my sons were really young when I started stitching this series. And while I would always want them to use clean hands while handling these, because the perforated paper is so fragile, I... I was afraid to have them touch them that they might accidentally tear. I mean, and that's not anything against them. I I tried one corner to see how easy it was to tear, and it was incredibly easy. So this meant that they could pick them up and move them around, and um, I, and I was perfectly comfortable and happy for them to do that, which was better for all of us. Um, I've since seen... Um, ideas from a couple of people for how they can be backed um, and so I've just gone back to stitching on perforated paper again I'm going to use Vonna's tutorial that has three layers of um, it's four millimeter something <laughs> mat board that's it um, on the back which will make it quite solid I'm excited about that so this one I stitched twice this is the um, one of the wise men in the series called Gaspar um, and I'm going to show you some more right now that I have not stitched this year. So that's Gaspar. This is another one of the wise men. I don't recall his name. One of them's called Malkior. I don't know if this is him or not. So what I do when I'm putting the hangers on is I... I put it through where I think it might go and then I hold it and see whether the bottom of the ornament will sit perfectly level or not. And sometimes I have to try several times to get that point. It's not always what they show as the center of the stitching because sometimes there'll be more dense stitching on this side, sometimes there'll be more dense stitching on that side because they're cut out. So that's something to be quite careful of. But I think he's beautiful. They're so heavy and they are absolutely resplendent with beads. So that's these two handsome men together. And I'm going to dig through my pile. <laughs> this is the third wise man. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Says the person who stitched it. I'm sorry, it's the design. <laughs> The design was incredibly well done. I just executed it. I love these wise men. I love how lavish they are with the beads. And beading is really actually an easy technique. It's easier than it looks. And it's much easier than the finished effect implies. I love particularly that they have mixed skin tones. Because really from where they were living, they should be Arab or darker. So I love that they're not all Caucasian. Um, and I love that they have very different robes, different cloaks, different gifts, different hats. They're just so much fun. So these are the three wise men. This is Christ with the angels. Angels, what is happening to my language? Apologies, with the animals, different A word, <laughs> in the stable. Uh, this is Mary. should probably hold her on this side. And she's holding a, an oil lamp, which is the correct type of lamp that was used in that period. And I like that detail very much. 
and then this is Joseph. And one of the things that I really like about this series, Joseph has very few beads on him. They edge his staff, they edge his shoes, there's a little bit through his robe, but not many. And that's the same for baby Jesus and the animals, or the, sh the sheep's pretty chunky. It's the same for Mary. And it's the same for the shepherds as well. It's the wise men who are lavish. And I, I really like that. I think it's quite appropriate um, because it shows the level of wealth. It's a nice touch. And then this is, I believe this one's named Luke, this shepherd. So I've stitched all of these ones. I've stitched one for me and one for my mum. Um, I've also stitched the other shepherd named Benjamin uh, for my mother and I have not stitched mine yet. Now my top tip if you're wanting to stitch one for you and one for a friend is I do one thread on hers and then one thread on mine or the other way around. It doesn't matter. And when I do it that way, the second time, or sometimes I'll do it like 20 stitches at a, at a go, You've already got the pattern in your head, so it goes so fast, and it feels like it's really fast, productive stitching, and so I just get on a roll with it, and I I really enjoy it. The other way is to stitch one and finish it, and then stitch another one and then finish it. Now with the other wise man, excuse me, the other shepherd, Benjamin, I stitched just my mum's one because it was getting towards Christmas. I didn't have time to finish both of them. So it was important to me that I followed my tradition, which is just my thing. There's absolutely no expectation from her whatsoever. But it was important to me that I gave it to her that year. And so I just stitched hers. And then I sat down to stitch mine and I did not want to do it. <laughs> I had literally no interest. So um, that was about a year ago. I looked at him again today and thought, oh, no, <laughs> I'm not ready yet. So just um, maybe bear that in mind if you're stitching something twice. And maybe the other way around would work better for you. But uh, this is what works for me, doing them both uh, genuinely at the same time. And um, I love this series. I think they're really beautiful. And what I like to do is to display them off a Danish Christmas tree. And our Danish tree is um, it's essentially bare branches or sticks in a vase or, or clean jar. Um, and so what that means is that your ornaments are fully on display. They're not slightly covered like they are, say, on, on this tree or another kind of evergreen. Um, and I like doing that with them just on their own. So you can see this one, this was before I saw Blitz Stitch's fabulous tutorial which is on his floss tube and it was a lot more up and down. It's not perfect because I had to run my threads but I'm really happy with it. The main thing from my perspective is making sure it doesn't get bulky in any place because that's when you can see when you finish it that it's just not all it should be. So, next up is, how about these? This is Prairie Schooler Old World Santas 2 series. And I have not yet shared any of these finishes. Um, except for one that was still missing some of the apples. So no true finishes on my Instagram. I'm so excited to share them with you today. So I had the absolute pleasure earlier this year of traveling to Ireland and Scotland, uh, which was my very first time. I absolutely loved it. I knew when I went that I would be traveling on a budget. I also knew I don't want to fill my home with a range of souvenirs that I bought just to be souvenirs that don't necessarily mean anything to me. So when I was preparing to go, I thought, well, what would be meaningful to me? I want something that I'll have in my home that I'll look at it and I'll remember this trip. And I thought, well, I really like having Christmas tree full of memories. And so if I take Christmas ornaments with me and I stitch them while I'm there, then when I look at them when I'm back, it will be 
memories. I'll remember where I was when I stitched them. And so that's what I did. I took these, this is um, again 14 count Ada, which I coffee tea dyed myself. I believe this is a Spygart fabric. Um, I use the Priscilla Chelsea method and I kitted it up. They're quite small. I used a much larger seam allowance on this than I'm accustomed to because I really want to finish them as ovals um, and I want to make sure that I have enough fabric to do that. Um, and I, I stitched them through the trip. Did I finish them on the trip? No. Um, I was... Gosh, I think the sun was up at around 5.30 or 6 in the morning and down at about 11 at night. Um, roughly, something like that. And I was go, 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 go every single hour of the sunlight, <laughs> if not every minute. So I didn't, but I visited a lot of castles, including, and this feels weird to say, but a lot of castles that my family used to own and live in and my ancestors were born in. And... Um, I sat, when I visited them, I'd sit in them and I'd, I'd do a thread on one. So every single one of these, and sometimes it was more than a thread, every single one of these I stitched part of in some way that was meaningful to me um, in Scotland or Ireland. And actually I think all Scotland, oh, the, yes, I lost... <laughs> I lost two needles down my plane seat on the way into Ireland. Don't tell the airline. <laughs> it was down the side. No one's at danger. But it took me a long time. No one was selling needles. I couldn't believe it. The number of shops I went into, oh, no, we don't have that. What are you interested in that for? Because um, I spent my time in, in, in very, very rural um, Ireland. So, yes, I did these in Scotland. Um, and they're just full of memories to me. And I've shared... A bunch of pictures on my Instagram page both recently and um, closer to the trip uh, of some of the fantastic places where I stitched them and yeah, they just make me so happy now this one has a mistake I've stitched the bottom half with one brown floss and you can see the top half with a different brown floss and I don't know how I made that mistake um, I clearly was not paying as much attention as I should have been. But I'm okay with it because it's not higgledy piggledy all over. There's a defined line here. And so I'm just telling myself that that's part of the design. It's meant to be like that. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but I'm going to enjoy it anyway. So these are all eight Santas in this series. I love how they're different colours, not just the Coca-Cola red, but the different colours that um, were used to represent Santa in, in earlier years. And um, in case I didn't say, I used all of the called for fabrics. Um, I have two more sets of things that I've stitched this year. Um, and both of them I'm going to show you things from previous years as part of it. Now this is my eldest son's 2023 ornament. This is Little House Needleworks Farmhouse Christmas series, the Cockadoodle Doo chart. Um, yes, I have cut this very tight. No, I don't recommend doing that. I've done it because I knew that I was going to finish it um, on like a mounting board with just a just I just need a half inch seam allowance. So I'll actually end up trimming it a bit tighter. Um, it's entirely as called for, except I chose my own fabric. I stitched it on 16 count French Country Golden Rain Ada by Witchout. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and I, once again, I love adding beads for embellishment. So the eye of this little cardinal and of this little rooster are both black. Now, my eldest son um, loves 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 farms and so for the past few years this series has been what I have been stitching for him as his Christmas ornament so while I'm showing this I'd like to show you the ones I did in previous years this was the the first one and please forgive me I don't recall the name of the chart but it is in the farmhouse Christmas series and this was the other one that I did and in all of them, I've used the same black Mill Hill seed bead for all of the eyes. 
Um, I've used the same called for colors and you'll notice that it's a DMC, not the uh, Fancy Floss. I'm unapologetically a stitcher on a budget, uh, which is also why I use Ada as often as I do, because it's a lot more economical than linens and even waves. Uh, but I still think they look absolutely beautiful. And particularly when you see them at a distance on a tree, um, you're not going to see the holes as much. Some Ada, the holes are really pronounced. Charles Craft, let me just grab that. Here we are. On Charles Craft, they are. So even after coffee tea dyeing this and boiling it a bit so that it would shrink, these holes are still quite pronounced. You can see very clearly, even from a distance, that this is Ada. But this 16 count wish out, the holes are much, much, much softer to the point that you have to be careful when you're stitching that you're going through the right hole and you're not one tiny thread off. And so that have a much more refined look as a result. I do love the look of linens and even weaves, um, but I don't always choose to stitch on them. Well, from the look of this, I hardly ever do. <laughs> All right, last two ornaments from this year, and I'm not going to show them to you right away. I'm going to show them to you in order as part of the series. You can see them in the background here. Uh, so this is the Prairie School the 12 Days of Christmas series, um, and I am stitching it on 32 Count Light Blue Lugana by Zweigart. I've chosen my own floss colours and I did it because when I started this series I wasn't into anything prim and now I am rusty crusty all the things. <laughs> so that's changed um, but I still love these just the way they are so I'm, I'm happy to share my um, floss conversion if anyone would like to see it. So this is the first day of Christmas. It's so cute. And I didn't stitch them in order. I've just stitched whichever one I feel like in the time. This is the second day of Christmas. And sometimes I've changed. And I don't remember it all. I stitched these ones in 2021, I believe. Sometimes I've changed not just which floss colour I use, but blatantly which colour and I think one of the examples of that was on this cage for the two turtle doves. I think the accents were meant to be dark green um, but as you can see they are gold. I like gold and I wanted to bring that out a little bit more in this design and help the colours feel balanced. Also these are meant to be grey accents on the turtle doves and I liked blue so mine have blue. <laughs> This is a test I did in the corner on the number of um, threads I used and I decided two. Two strands of floss would be the way to go. This number three I finished this year, three French hens. I'm sorry if that's not... I hope this isn't focused. I can't actually see because my... Um, it's not a tripod. The thing that I'm using to hold up my... <laughs> phone which is really designed for zoom calling um covers a huge chunk over the screen so i can't tell if it's in focus or not i really hope it is number three i did this year that was one of my uh, whip go goals number four was also a whip go goal this year and i love that and i just chose whatever colors i wanted for the birds um Within the palette, two blues, two greens, um, but where I placed them, I made it up as I went along. <laughs> part of it is what the, it was called for, and, and part of it was just, oh, I think this will look good, or how about that? One of the things that I absolutely love about this series that I hadn't realized right at the start, because I hadn't purchased all of the charts, There's, they come in packs of four, um, well, not really pack, it's, we, a, a, each chart contains four designs, that's a better way to say it. Um, every single one has a pear on him, and I love that, because when I'm thinking of wanting to stitch the 12 days of Christmas, I often only want to stitch the partridge and the pear tree. 
And so this is giving me those vibes in all of them. And this is the, the seventh day, which is the final one that I have stitched thus far. It was a bit of a beast with all that water. Um, and this was the one where I chose my blues. These, um, so I've already told you I didn't use the colors that they called for, but these blues were really difficult to find because I needed ones that would match well with the colors I already had in the design. But it also had to go really well with the blue background, and that was the hardest thing. The other thing that was challenging with this was this is the design on which I learned the pin stitch. And as you can see, I pin stitched every single one of these pieces of popcorn. <laughs> sure, they might be breadcrumbs, but I think of them as pieces of popcorn. And I don't recall who, but there was someone on Instagram, a lovely lady, and I saw that she had added additional popcorn to hers. And so I believe I copied that um, and added the additional popcorn to mine as well. So those are my um, my ones from this year. And then with a little bit more speed, I'll take you through previous years. So this is a Lizzie Kate Dear Santa. Uh, it's meant to be Dear Santa. We've got cookies, but in New Zealand, we don't have cookies. They don't exist. We have biscuits. So that's what this sign is and I keep it up in my library and it brings me so much joy and again it's got the um the gold dmc which at this point I don't know why I don't put on absolutely everything I stitch because I love it so much bent creek and merry little christmas now this is meant to be brown green brown <laughs> brown, dark green um, but I wanted something fun and funky that would appeal to my sons and so I I added these really bright beads from a charity shop um, beads here for the accent instead of white and fun colours this was a DMC that I'd had for gosh I think I got it when I was 11 years old I had it for a long time that I frankly wanted to use up <laughs> And that's why I used it on this, and I used it on Joy to the World, and I think it looks amazing on them, but my goodness, I had not thought of anything I could use it on for so many years. Here's a few that I don't recall the designer, um, but I really enjoyed stitching them. I wish I did. I don't always keep my charts. Um, and these are a few years old. This one, I think, may have been a Jureen Jones. I'm not quite sure. This one I wish I had finished as an oval and I would dearly love to rip it out and refinish it that way but unfortunately I used glue, I used a tiny 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 margin. Um, this was before I'd watched any finishing tutorials at all, I was just on my own. <laughs> um, and I'm worried if I take it off, it'll tear and it won't be able to go back on and could have all sorts of problems. So I've just left it like this, but I'm I'm not thrilled about all this white that's going to be going on my tree. So I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Maybe I'll put, I don't know, ribbon or something has to happen. I absolutely love this robin. The stitches are a lot messier than the stitches that I do now. I'm not sure if you can see that. They're not stitches that I would be proud of doing now. I think part of that's being crushed in a stack. <laughs> and a lot of it is three strands on 14 count, which is thicker, so it doesn't look as nice. But the most part is just being out of practice. I wasn't stitching every day then like I am now. And you can see all the brown looks a lot nicer than the belly. But I still really like it. I'm still really happy with this one. And then this was a Duran Jones. I chose my own colours. It needs a little red bead for Rudolph's nose. I, I don't recall whether it was charted as Rudolph or whether I chose to make him Rudolph. Um, but that's the only thing I haven't added. And I, I liked the, the very, very, very pale pink with this. It, to me reminds me of frolicking at the North Pole amongst the Northern Lights.
This was my youngest son's ornament last year, and this design is mostly by Rivaris. Isn't it cute? I love it. I chose my own colors again. This is DMC 115. Something that I love to do on ornaments is you know, whenever you use kits, there's going to be floss left over, and I never throw it out. Um, <laughs> ever, under any circumstances, unless there's like an inch left. So ornaments are the perfect opportunity to use it up because you only need a small amount. It's a really low cost way to choose your own colors and get comfortable with doing that. And that's what I chose to do with this one. So DMC 115 for the variegated, everything else was just DMC that I thought looked good together. Now I say this is mostly a Rivaris chart because this little kiwi here came from opening gambit designed by long dog samplers my son loves kiwis and so i decided this cheeky little kiwi just had to make his way into his christmas ornament and i i love that detail on it and i would love this ornament even without it i think from memory it might have had a blue bird there which was equally cute i just wanted to personalize it This isn't really an ornament, it's a bit bigger, obviously, um, but this is another Christmas stitch that is not on display this year because I have not fully finished it. And it's another Prairie Schooler. I chose the colours again. Nice and bright. <laughs> I don't know. I, my idea had been to do one of these every year and I don't know whether I'll do that because if I was doing it now I would not do it on this light blue Lugana. By Zweiga, I would do it on coffee tea though. So, I don't know. But that's part of evolving as a stitcher is your your tastes change. They don't get better or worse necessarily, but but they just grow as you do. Um, that's the way I see it anyway. And I think that's perfectly okay. Um, that's why I like to not have too many whips. I don't want to be in a situation where... I'm going back to something and I no longer like it because I no longer want to stitch with that number of threads or on that counter fabric. I'd rather get through them more quickly than that. And I must say, as a caveat, that I have my oldest whip. I think I'm going to get this wrong, but I think it's from about 2009. <laughs> So I'm not succeeding in that, but that's my ambition. <laughs> this was my youngest son's um, 2021 ornament. Excuse me, I'm just trying to make this bead sit a little bit more nicely. It's just sewn into a, a little hole. It's not over a, um, where a cross would go like they normally are. This is a Dimensions kit, and I absolutely... I just think it's so precious. I love it so much. Um, it came with 14 count plastic canvas. When I started stitching on plastic canvas instead of paper, I'd never seen anyone do it. And so I was excited to see that it's a thing <laughs> when I got this kit. Um, only change I made is adding these wee beads for the eyes and the nose. And again, I haven't finished the back. This was back when I did my up and down nice and tidy stitching. Um, I'm quite, quite happy with that back. Maybe I'll choose to leave it exposed. Who knows? I'd like to get matte board. Um, I don't sell it in New Zealand that I've ever found or the country I currently live in. So who knows? And then finally, these are ornaments that I stitched a couple of years ago and I actually designed them myself so I'm a really big fan of the proper stitches floss tube channel and of Annie generally um, and I particularly enjoyed watching her um, series talking about the history of Quaker samplers and it inspired me to want to stitch Quaker Christmas ornaments and at that point all I could find, which doesn't mean it's all that existed, but all I could find were larger Quaker designs that I could take a motif from. Um, and I just didn't want to do that. And so I thought, well, hold up, like you used to design quilt patterns. Maybe you can 
find cross stitch pattern yourself and um i felt really encouraged by annie's videos are so empowering i really recommend them to anyone i felt so encouraged by watching her videos i decided to just give it a go and i created this was my first ornament here using traditional Quaker elements and I put it on Etsy expecting frankly nothing. I didn't think anyone would be interested in it and that's not a lack of self-confidence. It's just the huge volume of amazing designs that are out there um, and there's space for everyone but it felt like a really crowded market and its reception was so unbelievably amazing that I continued designing for a time uh, then my life got very busy I only released I think two or three charts last year but these were these were my first ones these are my Christmas series so um, this one here this is Dasha Dancer Prancer Vixen Comet Cupid Donna Blitzen and Rudolph um, this is Rudolph's flight, so this is Rudolph and his charming little cardinal friend flying over the North Pole, going on a recce, or maybe up to some mischief, who knows. This is a Christmas tree farm, and I love the idea of making a Christmas tree from Christmas trees. <laughs> and then this is Silent Night, and my intention was to come up with a whole series of ornaments that were um, buffalo plaid, um, but I just didn't sit down and do it. So maybe I will this year. The things I want to do, like bar humbug, don't fit naturally within this size. And I, I wanted to keep them all quite small. But um, maybe I'll let go of that and do it anyway. I don't know. For all of these, um, so the company name, is it a company? The name <laughs> is Magnolia Nest Designs over on Etsy. Um, and... Uh, for all of them, they come with multiple colorways. So these ones here come with three colorways. This one's, this is the prim colorway that I've stitched them in. Uh, there's also a, um, I think I called it elegant, which is essentially it's, all, you stitch all in white. And so there's some things like the eyes that you wouldn't stitch, but that's indicated on the chart. And then there's one that's vibrant for people who are interested in very, very bright. Um, and in this one I had, I think there was a red option, which is the one that I stitched. There was a um, black and white option. And this fabric that I finished it on, and this fabric here were from my Nana's stash. So I'm really, really happy with that. And um, I clearly need to, this is on there, but not on enough. <laughs> I need to fix that. Um... But yeah, I need to just, just carve out some time in my life to start coming up with new ideas. And, and part of the reason that I haven't is because I've done Whip Go this year. And the way I have done it is a large proportion, a very large proportion of my Whip Go goals were 24 hours of stitching or a finish, which was often larger. So next year, I think I've decided not to do Whip Go because that will leave me more room to focus on you know, if I feel moved to design something, I'll be able to do that. Um, or I might do it and have realistic goals like other people. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyway, this is my uh, video. I promise I'd talk briefly about Mill Hills at the end. And I won't go into a lot of detail because so much of it is, is self-explanatory. So this is the one that I'm, I've just begun. I'm super excited about him. This is the Ireland Santa. So that's my, my only Christmas whip right now. There's one that I meant to finish, but I haven't touched it since July. So I suppose it's technically still a whip, but it's not really in progress right now. It's more waiting. <laughs> waiting to be progressed so when they come as you probably know the floss looks like this and um, it's actually quite tidy it, it comes apart all together as it's like a tube of lengths so you're not having to untangle it but then you have to go through the list 
of is it ultra very light blue or is it light blue or is it medium blue is it dark blue um and sometimes it's easier to to figure that out from than others so this one has white off white and i believe ecru um and recognize a lot of the colors now which is kind of embarrassing um and so what i do partially to make that easier for myself but also because sometimes and they're open about this in their chart sometimes they make substitutions um, is I take those threads and I go through my bobbins of DMC and so I'll say oh that looks like 3347 <laughs> or when I didn't know the numbers for a lot of them, and there's some that I don't stitch with as often that I don't know them, I'll go, oh, green, or I'll leave them till later. Um, or I'll go down these and, and turn and I'll pull out the color, oh, five, 758, what's 758? And I'll run through all of them. Um, but I'll pull out the number that it is, obviously this isn't it, and I'll hold it against it and I'll say, is that right, is it not? And that way it, it means that I know that I'm having exactly the right color. There was one time in one of my prairie schoolers, sorry, true. Um, one of my wise men that I recently did that I was meant to have a light grey that was about this colour and in the kit the grey they gave me was it's really a cross between these two colours so, and all three of them like they're, they're both even as they are they're significantly darker than this light one um, and so the one that was a cross between these two was astronomically darker than what it was meant to be and that would have really changed the look of the ornament because of where it was placed and it was a substitution that they'd chosen to make but because I had tested all of the colors myself I was able to choose was it a substitution that I wanted to make and I decided no I did not um, and so I just pulled from my own DMC stash um, if you don't have a large DMC stash I, I started stitching from books um, when I was, I think, 11. Um, from I just stitched kits until then. Um, and so I'd, I'd, I'd just put my DMC on bobbins and some of my colours um, could well still be from that age. <laughs> a lot of them I've used and restarted, but... I know in 2020 uh, there were a lot of colours that were still really old um, because that's when I was swap swapping over my bobbins from paper ones, including paper ones I'd handmade, um, cardstock, sorry, because I, I couldn't afford um, or couldn't find anywhere to purchase, I don't recall which one it was, additional DMC bobbins. Um, so I changed them all to these these plastic ones and a lot of them were really old. But what you can do if that's the case is if you live near a place that sells DMC you can take your kit down and you can do it in the store um, and I can't imagine anyone would have any issue with that um, and if they do then that's a conversation but generally they can be a bit elitist but people who work in, in craft stores are, are generally kind so um, I would hope that they would be understanding and generous towards you if that was something that you chose to do. And if you choose not to, that's okay as well. Um, and then for the rest of how, how to stitch these, um, the only other thing I would say is definitely read the instructions carefully and don't mix your packets of beads. <laughs> the reason they're separated is to help you identify which ones they are. So you can see, I, again, I don't know if it's in focus, I'm sorry, but there's a a small petite gold bead in here and there's a small petite gold bead in here and if they were mixed together you might be able to tell one from the other but you almost certainly wouldn't know which one is which in terms of the way they're describing them which one is petite Victoria gold and which one is petite crystal honey I would not know um, but petite Victorian excuse me, Petite Victorian Gold and Petite Crystal Aqua are both in the same packet. They both don't have an exclamation mark or an asterisk or an next to them. Whereas Root Bear, Petite Cream, Petite Crystal Honey, 
have exclamation marks. So you can see by looking for the obvious one, which in this case would be aqua, you can see this is Petite Victorian gold and you can therefore see the other ones are in here and that makes it a lot easier. Um, so I just encourage you not to make that harder for yourself. <laughs> anyway, um, that's a lot of talking. Thank you so much for um, watching, if you did. <laughs> um, I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, please let me know if you did. Thanks very much. Bye.